Ta-da! We're presenting you something cool called Solar Tree. Well, it's not actually a real tree, more like a solar and storage system in the shape of a tree. One company from London officially presented it recently, and their goal is to power EV charging stations. Where EV stands for electric vehicles, trees here produce clean electricity. The company has created these solar trees because they wanted to harvest power into an energy storage and management system, EMS, that AI runs. That system will both release and regulate all the power, and we'll be able to see the first generation of these solar trees in early 2023. I don't know what you think about it, but I can picture one of these in my backyard. You're chilling, having a cup of coffee hidden under a treetop, and you can charge your laptop or a phone without having to go inside. But we probably won't be able to afford it right away. The company has decided that they want to focus first on rapid electric vehicles. And they say that these trees will be cheaper once they're mass produced. I still got a chance. The tree has thin film solar cells. It can produce five kilowatts. That's enough to power a fridge, washing machine, air conditioner, oven, water heater, and TV. This is not the first time someone's come up with a thing that kind of combines botanical and solar. Have you heard of the smart flower? It looks like a giant robotic daisy. Smart flower has enough power to charge your kitchen appliances. So, how do solar trees work in general? They absorb sunlight with their leaves. The leaves are photovoltaic, which means they convert light into electricity. The electricity then goes down through the central pillar that looks like a trunk and ends up in an internal battery. Some designs have rotating panels that move throughout the day so the tree can catch more sunlight and, by that, produce more electricity. When you build a solar power plant, customers will mostly get a power purchase agreement where it says they can expect it to last 20 to 25 years. It doesn't mean your plant will become worthless after that. In reality, its infrastructure is really stable and panels will probably last 40, maybe even 50 years. And you can replace them with new modules that will be even more efficient after that, at a relatively low price. We need more sources of energy now because there are more and more things we need to charge. Like this Adidas Alrila match ball. When you first think about it, yeah, it's weird to imagine you have to plug in your football and charge it like it's a phone. But months before the World Cup, we got the news this was really happening. There will be a match ball with AI sensor technology. The point of the ball is to make referee decisions more accurate. It also collects data and statistics of matches so people can analyze games better. You need to charge it before every match to make sure its built-in sensor will work. When fully charged, a battery can last for six hours, and we're talking about active use. If you don't use the ball, it will last 18 days. When a ball goes out of play during a match and players replace it with another one, there's no need for anyone to do anything about it. The system automatically activates the sensor of the ball. Solar power is one energy source we have the most on Earth. Every hour, solar energy hits our planet so much that it could meet the yearly power needs of the entirety of humanity. Plus, it's the source where we can get energy the fastest. Do you also avoid keeping your phone plugged in overnight? It's not actually such a big deal as most people think. You won't ruin your phone by doing that. Smart technology works in a way it stops the battery of your phone from charging when it's full. Your phone also knows it needs to start charging again if your battery empties a bit when it's still plugged in. It's completely safe to leave my phone in a public charging port. Myth. Better avoid it because that's how you put your information at risk. Cords you see at airports and restaurants are not just a power source. Like, for example, when you plug the lamp into the wall. Cords create a path to transfer your data too. So when you're charging your phone at those public ports, someone can access your phone easily. That includes texts, emails, photos, and everything you have there. It's better and safer to use a portable charger. You know when you buy a new phone and everyone tells you you should fully charge it before using it? Well, you can do it if you want to, but it's not necessary. Manufacturers mostly say it to make a good first impression. 
By the time you hold your new phone in your hands, manufacturing and testing have possibly drained up to half of your battery. So, if you expect your new battery will last 8 hours and in reality it only lasted 4, you may get the wrong impression about your new phone. Another one. I could leave my phone on efficiency mode all the time. What's the harm? Well, it's not an actual myth. Nothing bad will happen to the software. But if you put your phone on low power mode for most of your time, you might have a poorer user experience since your phone simply gets rid of any extra thing. Sound won't be as loud as you usually like. You'll hardly see your screen because of low brightness. Plus, apps won't check for notifications all the time. But approximately every 10 minutes or so, Low power mode is great if you want to take a break from gadgets, though. My friend told me I shouldn't charge my phone until it reaches zero and turns off. I had to check that one, and as expected, it's not true. It's better to charge the lithium-ion battery before your phone runs out of juice. This type of battery kind of forgets when its maximum capacity level was. So, when you recharge it, your phone's battery might not recharge to its initial level. It may lower its capacity because it thinks it's on 100%. Even one app can take up tons of your battery, sometimes up to 20%. For example, some social media apps drain up your phone's battery since they're constantly doing things in the background, even when you're not doing anything there, like checking status updates, messages, and so on. It's useless to turn off your phone when it comes to saving your battery. Not true. Most of us don't fully close apps even after we stop using them. The more of them are running in the background, the shorter your battery life will be. So turn off your phone at least once a week to close them all. Let's say when you're watching a movie or having a long meeting at work. That way, you have zero tasks in the background as opposed to those 20 or even more tasks every 10 minutes. Nothing will happen if you touch your phone while it's plugged in, even though some claim differently. It's just that it will take longer for a battery to charge, so avoid using it if you don't have that much time. Here's one of my favorite myths. When you lose your charger, save some money and buy an off-brand one. That could damage the battery of your phone since these chargers might not have the standards in place to fill the battery with the correct voltage. No need to hit eject when you're taking your phone out of the computer. Not. If you don't hit eject, you could damage your files or keep the phone from finishing backup. And don't worry if you have Wi-Fi searching on all the time. It takes some energy, but not that much. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.